What is going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and I'm in the studio with Jonathan Mack at the Big Dog Podcast. What's up, Jonathan? Nothing much. Been a while since we've been here for a solo episode. Yeah, it has been. Um, we've been dropping some cool stuff. Now, this may drop out of order from some of the things that we're doing, but it has been a minute for us. Well, it may not be a minute uh, for our listeners. And man, my voice is something today, right? A little raspy? Yeah, I feel like mine is too. Man, you always just sound good. I sound like there's a train wreck going on inside of me or something. Uh, no, yesterday was crazy. Yesterday was um, last day of the month. We ran a little promo. Um, I got on the phones. Man, I think I was on the phone from 8 a.m. till I left here around 7.30, 8 o'clock. Got to the house. Devin was making food. I was like, all right, yeah, you want to eat? So we're going to eat. We're going to watch a movie. So this movie she was trying to watch. And um, I said that movie was done. It was like 11.30, 11.45. I was like, damn, that is a long movie. Then I thought about the fact that I left watching the movie two or three times to jump on a call with a client or someone interested in becoming a client and getting them set up and so they could take advantage of what we were doing. So it was a crazy day, but I talked so damn much. And when I text you yesterday saying, hey, it was in the morning. Like, let's jump in the studio in the morning. I got some stuff on my mind. I didn't think about the fact that I probably would not want to be talking today after all the talking I did yesterday. But alas, here we are. Here we are, and we're going to do it anyway. So it, it, I wanted to talk fathers a little bit, which is kind of funny. The, the way the schedule lied, um, you know, I didn't really get a chance around Father's Day to pop in here and do a, a Father's Day deal or anything which doesn't necessarily need a deal, but I have my thoughts on it. And I was like, you know what? Th this applies at all times. So maybe I would share some thoughts and I'm actually going to read some of my thoughts rather than just go off the cuff. Um, because I want to make sure I do get a couple specific points ap across. Um, so if I'm reading and you're watching, you know, that's why I'm not looking at you or necessarily looking at Jonathan. I'm literally reading uh, my notes. And so Father's Day's passed. Happy Father's Day to all the, the the daddies out there, the papas, the fathers, the grandpappies, the papsters, the papa jays, the grandpa deans, the granddaddies, the bumpas. What what do you call your grandfather, Jonathan? Pat, Pat, Devin and I were talking the other day, and we were joking around with the kids, and we were like, what? What are the grandbabies, when they come along way down the road, you know, what are they going to refer to us? So we were throwing out all these different names. And I always thought granddaddy would be a good one for me. I don't know why. I just always liked that. And that's actually what I referred to um, my, my, my father's father as. And I just thought it was a great name. Anyway, we landed on, um, <laughs> this is funny. One of the kids or some list Devin was looking at or something for like grand grandparent names and it was boss. And I'm like, Oh hell yeah. Let the grandbabies call me boss. That would be awesome. I could, that would be a good grandfather name for me, boss. And then we're talking about Devin Ray and she goes, they can call me cookie. Cause she likes to make cakes and cookies. and all that shit. So we're like boss and cookie would be our grand. What kind of like new eight, like <laughs> boss, Jonathan and cookie. Where are your grandparents coming? Yeah, boss will be here in an hour. It's where's your grandma? Cookie's coming in. Don't worry. God. No, I didn't know that you guys were like from Texas in like the forties. Man, look, it's ridiculous. We were just—I was in tears when we were laughing about that. If you're gonna take those names, you have to go out and buy a Lincoln Navigator. Something, something. Drop horns on the front of something. Whatever I'm driving. Oh my gosh, boss and Cookie. So baby, if you're listening. One day, Boss and Cookie may be the names that, that we're rolling with. But anyway, um, you know, we got back the afternoon before Father's Day. We, we were gone on family vacation, chaos of coming back in, which I think we've talked about on a different show, I think. And anyway, we get home late the day before. And Father's Day for me is always kind of a weird um a weird day. It's just what it is. And I think it's a weird day for a lot of people. I think having strained relationships with one's father 
is not a unique thing to to me. I think inherently men have issues, and so it creates daddy issues, and and here we go. Um, but for me, I don't ever want to be stuck in the freaking Father's Day, J.C. Penny, Lowe's ad, cargo shorts. You know, we're grilling in the back. Like that's just not like I don't feel that. I don't want that. That's not enjoyable to me. Like I don't want to do it, and I don't want to sit around and think about the failed or not ideal, you know, relationships that I necessarily had with the father figures, you know, in my life. So I like to travel on Father's Day, get out of the house, break up the norm, and do something new. My family knows this about me, and so um, it's like, hey, sweetheart, you know, what do you want to do? I was like, I know we just got back in town, but I'd love to go to Charlottesville. So we did. We got up the next morning. Kids are up. Everybody's in a good mood, and we bounced. We rolled to Charlottesville. Spent the day up there. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. Um, Distracts my mind, and I I have a nice day. I have found when I don't do that, the day is not a nice day for me, regardless of what my family is trying to do for me, Um, affection, their show, whatever. It it doesn't matter. Um, I just don't like it. I need to go somewhere and do something to kind of get my mind busy. And so, you know, I, I talk about how Father's Day is a weird thing. And, and I think the same thing could apply to Mother's Day in certain ways. Um, and I say, don't get me wrong. I'm excited that my kids, you know, go out of their way uh, to be super helpful and kind on that day. You know, Devin's always going to be extra sweet. You know, that's cool. But for me internally, and maybe the struggle is, and maybe for those listening, feel this as well. I really want to be the type of dad that has them feeling that way about me every day, right? Like there's, there's no difference. And do I deserve that? Mm, probably not currently. Do they deserve that version of me that deserves that type of honor and affection um, and engagement and love and intentionality? Do they deserve that version of me that has them doing that automatically every day of the year? Yeah, they absolutely do deserve that version. But I don't believe I'm currently providing that that version. Um, And we've all got fathers, right? Fathers that were involved and were amazing. There's fathers that are involved and were not so great. There's fathers that weren't involved at all. There's fathers that some of us never even knew. There's fathers that we knew and wished we hadn't. Some of us have zero clue who our fathers even are. And add that list on and on and on to the different variables. All of which, though, can come back to probably some strained areas in those relationships. You know, my father, he's a great guy. Like my dad, my, my dad, my father, Jerry, or Willie as some people know him. He's a great guy. I love him a lot. I really, really love my father, Um, and I really want great things for him and his life. You know, his interests and goals in life were very different from a goal and vision for one's life where a family is an important part of that, right? And for most of my life, I've really struggled with that piece and felt this, this burden, this desire, this need to prove that I was worth his attention, his time, his pride. And, you know, I think that's a tough thing that a lot of, and not men, I I think women also, when they have a parent who has exited out fairly early, while the reality is there's nothing to do with me or you if you're that kid, I think it's hard to to wrap your head around and process the fact that you know it it wasn't because of you. You know, I I've felt for a long time in my life like I have to to do more, do better, do great, show that that I'm exceptional in order to gain like validation of you know what I I missed out on not being a part of your life. Right. Like you, 
when I was a kid and you left, you not feeling that I was worth sticking around for, or even this. Okay. So it doesn't work with you and Ma, you know, yeah, I'm telling my story, but I think the story equates to a lot of people. It's hard for kids to separate the part. Like you don't see you're not with mommy anymore. You the kid feels like, damn, I punched this mic. The, the kid sees they've left me and that family unit. And so I must not be worth caring about, checking in on, being involved with. And that's hard. That's hard. I mean, it, I probably battled that and struggled with that heavily. I mean, for the first 40 years of my life, the last couple of years, I struggle with it a lot less. I've gotten to a place of some closure with some things, worked through some stuff, you know, but, and, and again, like I'm saying some things, I don't want people going off track and thinking any sideways about my father, or whatever. Like I said, I love the man. He's a great guy. He really, really is. He, his view of his life and what he wanted, he has done, I think, I think. But at the end of the day, I don't really know what he wanted for his life. Or as he's getting up there and stuff, if, if he's like, yeah, this is exactly how I planned it. This is exactly what I wanted. I'm good with all this. You know, go ahead, John. You want to say something? Yeah, I, I think that that's uh, one of the unsolvable and or one of those things that we wish we could solve is like an existential kind of uh, issue yeah. that everybody faces, you know, because I don't think that we'll ever truly get to know the people that uh, brought us into the world, you know, uh, as much as we try. Yeah. Um, I, and I think that's fair, but it's, it's crazy that kids have to try to figure this shit out you know they're, just, they're not equipped they're not, oh, not at all they're not equipped to do that and, and then the funny thing is i think back i'm like well damn when you know he and mom had me they were kids too hell when i had logan i was a kid we were early 20s that's a kid i don't know jack shit about anything i'm still a child right. well hell yeah you are like you got all, but it's just i mean hell at 43 i think i'm still in my mind i'm 25 right my body i'm 73 i'm trying you know we're, we're getting there but it's it's like, it's, it's so hard to, to get past that part where you're trying to, you're, you're so busy trying to figure out why you're not worthy of that attention. Maybe you're overdoing it, trying to create attention, still not being satisfied. So then you'll see the kids who are like, well, F it. I'm going to get attention in, in a negative way still not satisfied or coming. And it's just this weird disconnect. And, and I don't understand it. Um, I don't understand it at all. And I got pretty, pretty okay with it a couple of years ago. You know, I am out in California a lot. That's where he's at. And over the years we've had business out there. We travel out there a good amount. And for years I'd let him know when I'm coming out sometimes short notice. because That's how most of my trips are. Sometimes I'd give a lot of notice and there was always some sort of conflict. Couldn't meet up, couldn't meet up, whatever. I finally connect with him last year and um, we're going to be in alignment. Hadn't seen him in like 10 years. I hadn't seen my father in 10 years. And um, I was like, man, we're going to be like 30 minutes from your place. Like Devin and I, like, let's, let's connect. Let's get together. You want to do dinner? Come up to where we're staying, whatever. We'll do dinner. Man, we had breakfast with him one morning. And he had to bounce because he had to meet like the contractor or whatever. I haven't talked to him since. Except for Father's Day, I shot a text. I feel like that recognition is important. And I sent a picture of the kids because I want them to see legacy. That's what the kids are. I probably won't talk to him again for who knows. I mean, maybe a year. I don't know. A certain point, I think that, you know, maybe I got tired of him not reaching out and he probably got tired of me not reaching out. And maybe this is just where we're at. And that's okay. Like I'll carry part of that responsibility. Um, 
And there are similarities that I see between us. Like my career is very important to me. Work is very important to me. He's a workaholic like crazy. I mean, he was always working and traveling and, and doing the deal. And that's always very present in my mind when that's kind of the zone I'm in, that I'm still being very intentional with my kids. You know, whether it's a FaceTime or it's a call or it's, you know, I'm home, I'm dropping in their room, see what's going on, how's the day. I love you. What you're doing is important to me. I'm proud of you. I mean, that's that's something that is is big for me to keep trying to be connected. You know, so so he left pretty early, and there's always been this strain. And that was my father. I was super fortunate, though, to have an amazing dad. And he came into my life when I was 10. Um, and he actually raised me. And his name was Steve. And that was my mom's second husband. And they met in Vegas. I think they met at like a some country like Western like dance bar or something like that in Vegas. We had moved out to that area to, to live with Mamu after my my folks split. And um Steve's super young dude, military, and he he was um this will be funny, people will laugh. I, I like to tell stories about him being a professional dancer in Vegas. No, he was not a stripper. Um, but he would travel with these groups and he would like line dance and perform on like cruise ships and shit. And they wore the most terrible. I'm going to get you some pictures, Jonathan. I'm going to have mom bring some to the office. These outfits they would wear were atrocious. I'm talking about like peach pants with peach cowboy hats, like these big ass bandanas. At a certain point, you'd rather be a stripper, right? Yes. And I, I think that point was when they showed you the uniform. I think that's when, that's the point where that's you're like exactly when you opt out. You know what? I'm just gonna go strip and it's fine. But I don't Steve wasn't really built for that either, though, I don't think. So I don't know. But anyway, you know, Steve, whereas I felt like with my father, I had to prove so much to get some sort of acknowledgement, a call, what's going on, you're doing big things, whatever, whatever. With Steve, this dude shows up, and he's probably 21, 22 when him and mom met. I'm 10 years old, right? And I didn't have to prove a thing. Not a thing. He just, he loved me, and he wanted to be there for me because he loved my mom that much, right? It didn't matter. I had a badass little brother, Jared. I still have a badass little brother, Jared. And, um, you know, he's six years younger than me, so, I mean, he went to to like a 10-year-old, and like a four-year-old in these early 20s. That's a lot. I mean, that dude's still figuring life out and growing up. But he was kind, and he was encouraging, and he was thoughtful. And honestly, he was one of the most unselfish people I've ever known in my life. But he had a lot of struggles. And he had a lot of demons. And eventually, he left also. And that was me as an adult. And, you know, that shook the shit out of me. Um, and my family and my kids, my wife, my mother, of course. And I was hurt. I was angry. I wanted to hurt him. I wanted to kill him for what he was doing to our family. And, um, matter of fact, I remember being, I guess I was 11 and he sat down at the table with me, dining room table and asked me if he could marry my mom. I'm 11 years old. He's like, I want to marry your mom. Can I marry your mom? And I was like, if you make her cry, I'll kill you. So I told him I'm 11 years old. Because you got to understand all I saw before him was my mom fighting, stressed out, crying. A lot. And I remember telling him that. And then he was leaving. And I remember getting the call, and I come over. My mom's upset, and I'm talking to her, consoling her. And I walk inside to to see Steve, and I see this devastated man, a broken, broken man. And he's sitting at that same exact dining room table that we were sitting at when I was 11, and he asked if he could marry my mom. And in that moment, 
I wanted to hurt him bad. And I went in that house ready to. Now, I'm not a violent person. I'm a kind person. I'm a, I'm a tough person. Not the easiest necessarily to be around, but I'm a kind person. And I think a lot of times people think that just because someone's kind, they, they forget that they choose that. It doesn't mean they're not violent. They choose kindness. I was ready to choose violence. And I open the door and I walk in the house and I see him. And he's broken. And he's so upset and he's so hurt. And he's so disappointed. And I put my arm around him. I told him that I loved him and that you got to go. And when he left, I never spoke to him again. Uh, a couple of years later, I get a phone call and Steve had dropped dead. Never in my life had I felt a pain like I did that morning when my mom called me and she told me what had happened. The noise I made, the scream I let out, I can hear it right now. I feel it inside of me as I'm talking about this. I really, really don't live with many regrets. But cutting my dad out and casting doubt uh, upon my love that I have for him it's something that I don't know that I'll ever actually be okay with or get over, you know? Um, for 30 years, nearly 30 years of decisions that he made for my benefit and out of unconditional love for me and my mom, my brother, and Devin and my kids, 30 years of unselfish, great decisions for me, unconditional, regardless of me and my decision. When he was at his worst and struggling, I turned away from him completely. I didn't have to agree or even understand, you know, what the hell was going on with him, you know, at that time. But the bottom line was he was a broken man. And I didn't even try to help him a little bit. Every day I pray for forgiveness with that. I pray daily that should I fail my children in a way that hurts them, that they will extend grace and care towards me, even though I don't deserve it. And even though I clearly didn't extend it to Steve. You know, we all have fathers, and we all have different relationships with them. And we can't control their choices, their actions, their decisions. We have no control over the experience in their life that led them and built them and molded them to be who they are. But we do absolutely 100% have control over our own. You know, I saw my dad, my father, a year ago, and he knows about all this. He knows, like, I called him when Steve died. This is years ago now. I said, hey, man, I don't want it to be like this. You know, I, I want us to talk. I want us to see each other. You're retired. Bring your ass out here to Virginia. See the kids. See your grandkids, man. Like, I don't want it to be like this. We can't let it be like that. And it went right back to being like that. I saw him a year ago, and I haven't spoken to him since. Until Father's Day, I text him. And I would actually encourage you guys on Father's Day, or today, or on any day for that matter, 
don't act like you're not thinking about that guy who let you down and failed you. Because you are. You are thinking about them. Whether you ever knew your father or not, on Father's Day, you are thinking about your father. Whether he's active in your life or not, you are thinking about your father. If you do happen to know him and you do happen to know how to contact him, I think it's important that you do. Because again, we control what we can do on our end. When I text my dad on Father's Day, even though I hadn't spoken to him in a year, I text him a picture of my kids. I let him know what we were doing. I said, Happy Father's Day. I hope it's a good one. The reality is, I know it's a shitty one. Because his legacy isn't an active part of his life. While there isn't necessarily a lot of effort this way, I'm going to make sure he still sees what's happening. And I hate participation trophies. I really, really, really hate participation trophies. But at the end of the day, I'm going to toss him one, and that's what I did on Father's Day. Because I'm here and breathing because of him participating. And I do honor that. And I do place value on that. I do not have this burning desire to prove anything. Do I need to prove stuff to? Are the ones I owe everything to? That's my mother. That's Mamu. That's my wife. That's my kids. That's Steve. You know, we all got our own lives to live. You might have kids, you're listening to this, um, that you're raising, you may be done raising them. And like it or not, for good or bad, our fathers played a significant role in how we're going to choose to do that with our kids. Our fathers, good or bad, whether we like it or not, are going to play a significant role in our relationships with other people. And I hate, 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 that Father's Day is always a weird day for me. A couple of years ago, though, I chose that I'm going to start to control my feelings around it rather than have it control me. And one of the ways I control that is I leave my norm. I take my wife, I take my kids, and we go do something. We're getting out of the house. Ideally, we're getting out of the area. And not because the area reminds me of them or anything like that. It's just I have to mix it up and engage my brain in a different way. I don't want Father's Day to be a weird day for me. But it is. And by controlling my feelings around it, that's part of the reason I'm sharing these things with you today, these stories, because talking about it helps me. And talking about it with other people helps me. And maybe me talking about some things will help you to talk with somebody about some things. And you find that it helps you also. Because I don't want it to be a weird day for me. And I think the way that it ultimately stops being a weird day for me on Father's Day, because of the stuff I struggle with, is that I'm going to keep working every day to become that husband and that father that my kids and my wife and my family and my future grandkids and great grandkids and generations from now want to honor daily because that's the type of steady impact I've had in their life. That's the type of love and affection and pride I've shown to them. And in return, it's not because it's a day that they're going to treat me different. Why are you going to treat me different on that day? I need to, I need to be to where the, the, if you're treating me your best on that day, I need to be the person who deserves that every day. And that's not on them to do. That's on me to provide that version of me and grow into that version of me. 
I'm thankful to have the father I have. I'm blessed and thankful that I had the dad that I had too. I hate that neither one of them are active parts of my life. And every day I'm going to wake up to make sure that's not the same with my kids. I love you. I hope this is helpful to you. Mama, I hope none of this upsets you. And I just love you. Hope y'all had a great Father's Day, y'all. You're doing your best, fellas. And I'm going to keep doing mine, too. We'll see you next time on the Big Dog Podcast.